There's one question cavemen used to ask that has never been answered until now. Can you use a handheld to replace your mini PC? So we take this, combine it with this to replace this. Hmm, a true question for the ages. Computex 2024 was where I had my first experience with the MSI Claw. That's how it's pronounced. You say the name and then do the claw mannerism after it. Don't ask me why. I don't make the rules. The Claw is a large handheld gaming PC that has been covered extensively by other channels. But what about the desktop experience? Does it work? Is it practical? That's what we're going to find out and we'll get right to it after this message. Are you looking for a way to safely and quickly transfer files and apps to a new PC? Well, say hello to Ease Us To Do PC Trans. A simple to use app that can help you transfer programs from one PC to another or create a full backup of your computer. Try it for free with the link in the video description. My first experience with a handheld PC was the original GPD Win I bought around 7 years ago, which was an interesting first attempt but ultimately awful in every way. Luckily, things have improved in leaps and bounds over the years, though it took a company like Valve to show how to do it properly. And now, there's a bunch of handhelds on the market. So, can you use something like the MSI Claw to replace a mini PC or desktop to be the all-in-one work, business, and gaming machine? Well, to start with, the Claw, like laptops, has almost no ports, apart from the Thunderbolt 4. So to make it a desktop PC, we need a Thunderbolt 4 dock, and the official MSI branded dock is known as the Nest, and is purchased separately. Apart from the Claw and Nest, MSI also loaned me the official carry bag for this review. Very useful to keep it in working condition when carrying it from place to place. This Claw features the Intel Media Lake Ultra 5135H processor, which is 14 cores and 18 threads with Intel Arc graphics. It's currently available in Australia for 1000 Aussie pesos, while the Nest docking station comes in at 129 Aussie rubles, and the accessory kit is 79 Aussie crowns. So at least an investment of over $1,129 e-dues for the handheld and dock. The difference compared to a desktop PC or mini is that you also get a 120Hz 7-inch touchscreen, controls, 53Wh battery, speakers, and microSD card reader. A 512GB NVMe SSD is also included, and 16GB of LPDDR5-6400, which is faster memory than what's available with sodium slots in a mini PC. The Nest docking station adds a lot of ports to the core. After connecting the included USB-C cable, you end up with a HDMI port, a couple of 5 gigabit USB 3 Type-A, gigabit LAN, USB-C 5 gigabit, and a USB-C charging port to power it with the provided charger. That's a pretty good set of ports coming off just one Thunderbolt 4 port. That being said, I do have a couple of issues with the Nest. For the price, it could be more premium. It feels flimsy, and the plastic tray holding the handheld doesn't even have much rubber on it. It also doesn't feel like the same level of build quality as a Claw itself. But more importantly, it wouldn't work with my 4K 60 hz Samsung SAU monitor. I gave it an hour of troubleshooting before giving up, but I did narrow down the problem. Ubuntu did work fine at 4K 60 on the same monitor, so the dock isn't the problem. It's either a Windows 11 or GPU driver issue. That being said, I did manage to get external display output working in Windows using a 1080p monitor. So, all captured footage is 1080p. Okay, once you've gone through the initial setup process of the handheld, just plug in the dock, HDMI, mouse and keyboard, and it should show up on the second display. Then, right click on the Windows desktop and choose to only display on the external monitor unless you want the 7 inch core screen to be used as a second display. Pretty straightforward. Now our mini PC is set up. And with that, we jump into the benchmarks and compare the claw against the mini PCs I've reviewed. Out of all the mobile chips I've got in this stack, the claw's Core Ultra 5 is smack bang in the middle for single core performance. There's a limit to how much power you can pump into the handheld with its limited cooling system. So, multi-core takes a hit over what a Core Ultra 5 in a mini PC can do, but you're still looking at something around the Ryzen 7735HS level for your desktop experience. 
Geekbench has a single core around the Core Ultra 5 mini PCs. The multi-core, again, a sharp drop, but still around 7735HS territory. Video encoding is an important metric if you want to use a core as a portable video editing workstation, and it does a pretty good job, again, around the Ryzen 7735HS. You can also see how far ahead it is of the current MSI QB, which is a business-focused mini PC. AV1 encoding, a similar deal. And AV1 hardware encoding isn't anything amazing, but it did beat one of the mini PCs tested so far. 3 d Mark scores are pretty good in both DX11 and DX12 benchmarks, but as always, Intel performs better in the benchmarks than in actual games. Here's the latest Steel Nomad DX12 result. Inside the core is a pretty good Gen 3 NVMe drive. A lot of the Intel Media Lake Minis come with Gen 4, which, depending on the drive, have faster sequential reads and writes. Not really useful for a handheld that only has an SD card slot for a secondary storage option. Bluetooth range is the best recorded so far at 7.5 meters or almost 25 feet. I test a portable speaker and look for uninterrupted audio playback and no artifacts in the music. Wireless range is good. At 12 meters or 39 feet using the 5G band, there were no notifications popping up about connection issues during my Valorant game session. As mentioned earlier, you can run Linux on the handheld. I booted off a USB through the dock and it worked just fine. Okay, so before we check out some desktop gaming, let's have a look at video editing performance. As an Intel handheld, the claw makes the most sense if you're also using it for content creation, not just gaming. And Intel's QuickSync doesn't disappoint. The MSI claw handles my 4K project really well. You might already know that Intel's Meteor Lake can't compete with AMD's latest in AAA games. Does okay with esports, where it can get similar frame rates at 1080p. Oh, and my capture card didn't get an audio feed for some reason, even though the audio passed through to the monitor speakers fine. So, there won't be any audio in the gaming tests. A game like Forza Horizon 5 isn't as demanding and runs almost 60 FPS at 1080p low. Newer AAA titles struggle even with an image upscaler and low quality detail settings. Idle power draw on the core is higher than your average mini PC. And yes, I tested with the screen and RGB off with the battery at 100%. At 60 watts maximum power draw, it falls into the U series category and much less than most mini PCs. Still, even with the lower power draw, the CPU maxed out at 103C when put under a full core load for 30 minutes, which is obviously not a great result. Fan noise is slightly higher than the average mini PC when pushed. Overall though, it wasn't too bad. And the SSD showed high attempts when thrashed. Not surprising in such a compact space. Overall, using the MSI Claw as a mini PC worked well. It works just the same. You just plug your devices into the dock and off you go. Since the power limit has been reduced, you lose multi-core performance, but it also draws less power. Is it a viable option to use a handheld as a desktop PC if you don't want to double up? I think so. Even the port selection isn't bad. You've even got a LAN jack for wired internet. And if you've heard about the strangely named upcoming MSI Claw 8 AI+, it will add a second Thunderbolt 4 port to the handheld, which will allow even more ports or an external GPU bringing it even closer to a mini PC. All right, I'll pass on my findings about the Nest Dock and 4K monitor, so hopefully it gets fixed. And if you still prefer a mini PC, why not check out my review of the MSI QB NUC right here. Cheers.